Welcome to Find Your Way Home with Christine and Christine. As Christine was praying with Christine, we <laughs> we realized we had to do something that we felt was urgent. Now, many of you might have already done this, but if you have, we're encouraging you to do it again. And it's to consecrate yourself to the Mother of God. Because the times we're living in have a sense of urgency to them. Things seem very unstable. The church seems unstable, society seems unstable, our families seem unstable. Don't we want protection? Don't we want to feel like everything's going to be okay? Yes. And the person, one of the very beautiful people who wants to help us through this is Mary. And so I've written a consecration. There are others. All of them are, are good and important this one is mary's mantle consecration a spiritual retreat for heaven's help and this is the prayer journal that goes with it where you meditate on scripture and you meditate on notes from saints or quotes from saints i should say that is Here's english the english version <laughs> gracias it's a different kind of consecration in that you not only come under the protection and guidance and care more deeply of your mother in heaven, but you also work on being perfected in the virtues and receiving the gifts of the spirit. Every day you read a two minute meditation and you learn about what virtues are inside of you and what virtues you may need to work on. You also pray a daily rosary, you do some fasting, you go to reconciliation, and then you say a prayer of consecration or you re-consecrate yourself if you've already done that. But if you already know about it, um, you may consider doing this in a group because we need each other right now. We need to form communities. We need to pray hard. We need Our Lady. And if you go to www.marysmantleconsecration.com, you can get all the information there. You get the books. You can look at videos of people who've been through it. Um, it's endorsed by Archbishop Salvatore Cordelione and Bishop Myron Cotta. You can have your kids join in. You can have them add a star to Our Lady's mantle each day. There's 46 stars on her mantle. There's 46 days in Lent. So we encourage you to start at the beginning of Lent and end on Holy Saturday. And get your pastor excited. Because if he says yes, your whole parish is going to receive a huge blessing. And when a pastor does it, he gets to choose an intention that he wants everyone to pray for. So you, let's say you have 100 people doing it. You have 100 people praying a rosary every day, 46 times 100, plus fasting, plus consecrating themselves. Huge, huge, massive graces. So you can watch the video on the testimonies or read from pastors. A group of lovely, lovely nuns went through it and enjoyed it so much that they actually sewed a mantle and sewed a star onto it each and every day. And also, I neglected to mention that these there are videos that are part of it weekly. So you can go online and watch the video. And everything's on this website, marysmantleconsecration.com. Or you can get the DVD set. But hey, if you want to save some money, just go on YouTube. And also, you get bulk discounts. So this is, this is not a, a costly endeavor. So Christine, why would you say it's so important right now in our times to have ourselves consecrated because there is so much division christine everything we have families divided we have you know houses divided we have workplaces divided we have political divisions we have um people aren't seeing each other people have been i mean we can look around and see what's happened in our world for the past two years everywhere there is division separation and that's causing tension that's causing isolation that's causing depression that is causing anger it is causing all of these negative emotions to rise up and the lord said you know wherever two or more are gathered there i am so i look at the separation and i can't think that it's anything but diabolical satan is trying to divide the body of christ so that we are weakened we really are vulnerable to evil and, and bad things if we're not 
full of the Holy Spirit if we haven't been working very hard on our virtues. Christine, do you want to tell the story of a Protestant preacher who has had great success in his ministry, and our Protestant sisters and brothers do have the Holy Spirit, and we pray that they too come to know Mary. Invite them to do the consecration, because uh, many evangelicals, um, a Jewish person, atheists, have come to the faith because this is such depth of truth in terms of being virtuous and it's given people such consolation through hard times that Mary's mantle has has been a tool of evangelization but you have a great story with with Benny Hinn would you share that one I do so I might get some of the details a little bit off but Benny Hinn is a great uh, Protestant speaker and I had read of this event that he went to once where he was a speaker and it was in an auditorium, so I may have the numbers incorrect, but it was full, you know, so 15, 20,000 people in this auditorium being led to God through his preaching. And this coven of Satan worshipers knew that this event was going to take place, so they had made a plan to go to the event and to curse him. They wanted to, like, knock him down and take away some of his power. So they went to the event, and they stood in the perimeter of the, just kind of like in the out you know, standing part. And what they did is they tried to find a chink in the armor, so to say. So they said that he had a blue aura around him. And all of us are said to have, I mean, if we could see with our supernatural eyes, um, that there's some aura of different colors around us. Anyway, so, and I believe the story came from one of the Satan worshipers who had converted because of the, you know, witnessing this. Anyway, when they were trying to con curse him, they were looking for an opening. Like, did he have a porn addiction or did he have a, a bad habit of, you know, may maybe smoking or, or, or something where he wasn't taking care of his body or his soul or his marriage or... And no matter how they looked, they said they couldn't find an opening that he was leading a good life. I mean, it doesn't mean that he wasn't a sinner, but that stuck with me, Christine, because I was thinking, if that were me, would they find an opening? Do I have a weakness? And it's not like you don't sin, but it's like, is there a perpetual area of sin that you're in? That's kind of what they were talking about. And so... I think all of us should be seeking to close any gaps we have in our armor. And I thought that story has stuck with me for years, especially since, you know, the Satan worshipers were like, can't do it. They were powerless. That reminds me of that's how demons work. They look for the weak link. St. Ignatius of Loyola talks about that in his Rules for Discernment of Spirits. They're always looking for that chink where they can enter in. And they don't change. They don't pick a new tactic. If you're a smoker, they're going to try to get you to smoke. They're not going to try to get you to do a new thing that you're not interested in. If you're, if you're not into gluttony, they're not going to work that angle. They're going to work the angle that you've fallen before or have a propensity to fall into. And so that's why this consecration is different in that, yes, you learn about Mary through the videos, but you learn about yourself through the books. You learn how to be more like Mary. You learn how to be more like Jesus Christ, which is the entire reason we're here on earth. Yes. And I know, Christine, you said, well, wh when I met you, what is consecration? Do you go like this? I'm consecrated <laughs> i don't know what it means but it sounds good Hi. it is <laughs> so the word consecration means set apart consecrated to god for a holy purpose but there's more to it when it's a human being being consecrated not a, a chalice or an inanimate object right. it's a deeper relationship with our mom and in this case of Mary and consecration, we give her, we say, I'm going to give you all of my good works. I'm going to give you myself, my, my soul, my body, even my failures, my sufferings, all of my merits. I'm going to give them to you, Mary. And what Mary does is she takes them 
And then with her own prayers and her own perfection, she gives them to God for us. And because she's the mediatrix of all grace, she in turn helps the grace from God come to us and through us, helping us to follow a more direct path to her son. So she helps us not deviate too much. She's there to cover us with her mantle. Christine, you did a a great job explaining it like this. Yes, we might still get into a car wreck, but if we've consecrated ourselves to Mary, we're going to have a seatbelt on, we're going to have airbags blow up, and (laughs) we're going to potentially even have a helmet. We're going to get through life with much more spiritual, even physical sometimes, safety. We're going to be okay. And we're going to feel like we're okay. It's not going to be just this, hey, everything's going to be all right externally and I'm not going to feel good. No, it's, it's having our, I mean, every little baby wants to be held when they're crying, right? It's not... I mean, granted, some kids have had trauma and they push their mothers away, but that's a separate subject. (laughs) Basically, most babies want the protection of the swaddling clothes and the mom and feeling comfort and and, and the mom saying, I gotcha. And that's partly what Marian consecration is too. And so even if we've already been consecrated, I think as children of the Most High God and as children of our mother Mary, we need that more than ever. Christine, you know what I was thinking when you were saying that is I saw Mary and I saw Mary take me, right? And I saw her gather my prayers as imperfect as they were. And and I saw her going up to Jesus and saying, my son, Christine has been trying so hard. She's, you know, she's not perfect, but she's been praying. She's been giving you this and she's been working on her humility and she's been working on her her um, chastity and her generosity. And and I just want you to see how much she loves you and she's working towards you. But I saw her tenderness in saying, Jesus, yes, I know she, she makes mistakes, but look what she's doing for you. And that warmed my heart when you were saying that, thinking it is so um, peace giving to know that I have such a powerful advocate to cover for me. And I really like the way that you have it in this book, Christine, because it, I'm a tangible person and it makes it understandable what I'm doing and what God is giving back to me. So prayer rosary every day. Okay. I can do that. I can even add a rosary for the sake of the consecration because my husband and I already do a rosary fasting. Um, I have seen such beauty. I don't know if you ever have, but like I have fasted in the past where God has shown me fruit that day, like the day my fast ended. And I was like, wow. Then also focusing on these virtues is so, so powerful because for me personally, I'm always like, okay, I want to be a better person. How do I do that? And, and again, just to be clear, you do have the workbook and I was so thrilled to have the workbook because it helped me to organize my thoughts. So you'd read this little meditation about, for instance, humility. And then I was able to write about what did that little meditation mean to me? I had just posted on my Instagram and Facebook pages today about humility. And what I posted was that the more we work in our humility, which is spiritual, the more we weaken our pride, which is the the paradox to humility. And the example I had written about was your spouse's divorce you or is trying to divorce you and and he's he or she is mean spirited, always returning the kids to you two hours past the time they're supposed to, making nasty comments, just intentionally trying to hurt you. And then you were running errands, time got away, and you ended up getting the kids back a half hour later than you normally do. So when I was posting about always apologize for your missteps, regardless of um, their proportion to your prodigals, it told me that, you know, if you can say, I'm so sorry about having the kids get too late, we don't want to do that. Our flesh wants to say, 
you know, he or she does this all the time. I don't need to say sorry. But you know what that is, Christine? That's our pride. Our pride is saying, yeah, they may make a lot of mistakes, but I don't want to apologize for mine because I don't make as many as they do. And so it challenged me. And so in this in this consecration, when we strengthen a virtue, praise God, we are naturally at least focusing on weakening a vice. And that was quite powerful to me because it just pointed out how much I need this. I need to weaken my flesh. I need to strengthen my spirit. It's probably true for you and and others, yes? Oh, of course. And I think if we understand that we are more protected, the more virtuous we become, then there's a perhaps an even greater incentive to work on that weak link or those weak links. And and oftentimes I've heard people, people do Mary's mantle consecration over and over again. Parishes stop and they the, the, the parishioners say, let's do it again. I, do it again. I, I wouldn't really advise that, but people, um, they get so much out of it. And so they want to go into discovering more about how much God and Our Lady love them and who they are. So for instance, if a person is really struggling with pride, that is going to be a huge barrier to heaven, a huge barrier to one's brothers yes. and sisters, and a huge opening, right? And so sometimes we don't know how to pierce through that. And in reading the meditations, we gain help. And in going through the prayer journal, we gain even more help. So for instance, if we're to look at, I'm just going to randomly pick this on the virtue of meekness. So there are many chances to work on ourselves if pride is eating at us. I'll just read a bit from this. This is the 14th star that we add to Our Lady's mantle. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. Meekness is a virtue that Jesus alone inculcated and which no ancient philosopher seems to have understood or recommended. Even our modern usage of meek can be dominated by a sense of weakness, cowardice, or people-pleasing. In Jesus' mouth, it is not that. To be meek is to be a spiritual rock. In the evangelical sense, meekness is humility, resignation, submission to the divine will without murmuring or peevishness. It is mildness of temper, softness in dealing with others, and forbearance under difficulties, setbacks, and injuries. One who is meek is not easily provoked or irritated. Mm. (laughs) Is that striking a chord with uh, anyone? By reason of being born into the world, we naturally create an illusion in our minds of who we are a treasured lie for which we long, fight, and suffer. Depending upon our wounds and whether or not our self-image is praised or rejected, our moods travel from elation to depression and back again. This can be the source of great emotional instability and pain. The meek person has fought to tame the roaring lion of the human ego, the source of his childish reactions and unreasonable attitudes the beast that seeks to glorify and defend itself at all costs. Yeah. Another one of my areas of weakness, Christine. (laughs) The capital sin that is the opposite of meekness is anger, which is very similar to pride. But you mentioned that when you're reading it is taming the emotions. And it doesn't mean that we don't have righteous anger, but it means we don't let it come out in an inappropriate way. And so to, to focus on becoming meek is to weaken our flesh in the area of, of anger. And you're right. Who doesn't need that right now? I mean, we have a kind of angry society. I'll I say. <laughs> yeah. And so we really um, want to help you to understand that Yes, we can get to heaven and we can we can form community without Mary's help. <laughs> but to have her with us and to be so close to her as to be consecrated to her is kind of like taking the bullet train and taking the direct route 
rather than taking horse and buggy. <laughs> take, yeah. The other way is is instead of a jet plane, we do the horse and buggy route. Why not take the jet plane if you want to get somewhere and, and you're focused on it, and you you don't want to be unprotected. You don't want to fall into sin. You don't want to see your family dispersed. You don't want to see your church right. fall down. You want to see it propped up. And that is part of Our Lady's role as well. So let us come together in community. And I'd like to mention a story that comes from a dream that St. John Bosco had. Just to summarize it, he saw a huge ship that represented the church and all these other boats that were trying to take it down. And a pope was at the helm of the huge ship. And there were these two columns in this vast sea. One had Mary on top of it with the words underneath her saying, help of Christians. And the other was a much larger, sturdier column with the Eucharist atop it. And this boat was having a huge problem because the tiny boats were firing cannons at it, trying to crash into it, also throwing books and pamphlets at it. That was part of the warfare. And they attacked so fiercely that the Pope aboard tried to convene his captains to have a meeting, but that was ruined because of the fighting. And then he was able in the lull of the fighting to convene a meeting, but then the fighting happened again and he was killed and the enemies rejoiced. But the church quickly found another pope and the boat went forward, great fighting, and it only found peace. The sea was only still when the large boat passed through the two columns. Now here's what St. John Bosco tells us about his dream. He said, very grave trials await the church. Now he lived in the, primarily in the 1800s. What we have suffered so far is almost nothing compared to what is going to happen. The enemies of the church are symbolized by the ships, which strive their utmost to sink the flagship. Only two things can save us in such a grave hour. Devotion to Mary and frequent communion. Let us do our very best to use these two means and have others use them everywhere. So Christine and I feel like that's a wonderful lesson for our times that we not only need to do that ourselves, if we're able to receive communion, other, uh, please go to Mass if you cannot, do spiritual communions every day, and also practice devotion to our Holy Mother, the Rosary, consecration. Do not neglect her because it was only through these two things. It was only through Jesus and Mary that the boat arrived safely. I see right now, too, God is kind of waking us up. I have a friend who is a devout Protestant. He's a Presbyterian. He loves the Lord. One day was in bed, never attended a Catholic mass. He had attended one with me, actually. Um, I invited him a couple months ago. But apart from that, he had never prayed the rosary. He had one in his house because his mother used to pray it and she had died and he happened to have it in the end table. So one day, about a month ago, at three o'clock in the morning, he was awakened. And he said, I had this absolute unquestionable message downloaded into me that said, pray the rosary. He said, I'd never prayed the rosary in my life. And he said, I tried to make it go away. He goes, but there was no question. I could not. This was a download. I went over there. I grabbed the rosary. I pulled up the internet on my cell phone and he started reading, you know, what is the rosary? What are the prayers? And he didn't go to bed that night until he prayed it. And he had to every single word, every bead. What does this? I mean, that's kind of massive, Christine, where you don't know anything about it. And then you do it. Well, now he is just he's coming to Catholic mass and he was never away from God. But he said, when I go into my, and this, and again, this isn't about anyone who's not Catholic. This is my friend's 
story, but he said, I always felt God. I, I felt it at my, my church. I, I you know, I, I loved him. But he said, when I walked into the Catholic church and I sat there, he said, something came over me. I felt some power. And I said, that's because right there is the Eucharist. That's Jesus on the altar. Anyway, so the reason I bring this up is because I believe the Lord, like with John Bosco, was saying, I'm just going to start downloading to let you know my mother is there for you and she can do so much to protect you, to prepare you, to get you ready for whatever you may have to face. And I think he's just, you know, God um, is waking up his people kind of to ready us for a battle. Does, does, does that seem to make sense? Because it was a pretty powerful story to me, Christine, to hear this. I was like, wow, Jim, God is just, he's, he's just downloading in you, he loves you. God is preparing us to be saints. Yes. He wants nothing less. Mary is desiring nothing less. And so that's, that's the calling. And some people believe that St. Louis de Montfort, who is known as the Marian consecration saint, of today because he really spread devotion to Mary. His book is called True Devotion to Mary. And I want to read something that he wrote. He tr he believed that he, it looks like from this quote, was living in the latter days. And some people today believe we are. But whatever you believe in terms of what kind of times we're living in, God always wants us to be saints. But these are the kind of saints that St. Louis de Montfort said would occur in such times. I'm going to read this if you'll indulge me. Toward the end of the world, and um, the end times doesn't necessarily mean the end of the world, but an end of an era. Almighty God and his Holy Mother are to raise up saints who will surpass in holiness most other saints as much as the cedars of Lebanon tower above little shrubs. These great souls filled with grace and zeal will be chosen to oppose the enemies of God who are raging on all sides. They will be exceptionally devoted to the Blessed Virgin. Illumined by her light, consecration, strengthened by her spirit, supported by her arms, sheltered under her protection. They will fight with one hand and build with the other. With one hand, they will give battle, overthrowing and crushing heretics and their heresies, schismatics and their schisms, idolaters and their idolatries, sinners and their wickedness. With the other hand, they will build the temple of the true Solomon and the mystical city of God, namely the Blessed Virgin. They will be like thunderclouds flying through the air at the slightest breath of the Holy Spirit. Attached to nothing, surprised at nothing, they will shower down the rain of God's word and of eternal life. They will thunder against sin. They will storm against the world. They will strike down the devil and his followers and for life and for death, they will pierce through and through with the two-edged sword of God's word all those against whom they are sent by Almighty God. They will be true apostles of the latter times, to whom the Lord of hosts will give eloquence and strength to work wonders and carry off glorious spoils from his enemies. They will sleep without gold or silver and, more important still, without concern in the midst of other priests, ecclesiastics, and clerics. Yet they will have the silver wings of the dove, enabling them to go wherever the Holy Spirit calls them, filled as they are with the resolve to seek the glory of God and the salvation of souls. Wherever they preach, they will leave behind them nothing but the gold of love, which is the fulfillment of the whole law. They will have the two-edged sword of the word of God in their mouths and the blood-stained standard of the cross on their shoulders. They will carry the crucifix in their right hand and the rosary in their left and the holy names of Jesus and Mary on their heart. So praise be Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful, beautiful set of 
words and images about what a saint can be in the eyes of God. So Christine and I would like to encourage you not to shoot low, but aim high. Yeah, I want to be one of those saints, Christine. When you were reading that, my heart was like, I want to be one of those saints. And I need Mary's help. I do. And I'm so grateful for this consecration. And I, I would encourage each of you watching to want to be one of those saints, too. God will give us the grace to get through. We can do it together. Let's be saints. Let us pray. Mother Mary, thank you for being with each person who is listening or watching this. Through your prayers, Mary, guide them directly to your Son, in whose sacred heart there is joy, peace, love, fullness of life, meaning, purpose, and every virtue. Mary, cover them with your mantle. Protect them and their families always. Say to them from your most immaculate heart, My children, I'm going to help you find your way home. God bless you.